Mr. Twinter. Mr. Speaker, sir, I am very grateful to you for granting me permission to intervene on a very important and critical bill which is before this August House. Sir, all modern societies are complex societies. They require strong, purposeful government to steer them. In our own country, government expenditure, both at the center, state, and local bodies level, accounts for nearly 33% of our gross national product. At the same time, the social and economic imperatives require our government to intervene extensively in economic and social affairs. Therefore, the efficiency and effectiveness of governmental processes are critical variables which will determine how our government functions and to what extent it is able to discharge the responsibilities entrusted to, it, entrusted to us by the electorate. I have always believed all power is a sacred societal trust, that you cannot sit on power, you have to spend it, but you must spend it taking into account the good of the largest number of people. Therefore, it becomes obligatory that in addition to processes that we have to determine that expenditure conforms with the canons of efficiency and effectiveness, but we all know that there are widespread complaints in our country about wastefulness of expenditure, about corruption in matters which have relations with the functioning of our government. And therefore, it is very important that we must explore new effective mechanisms to ensure that our government will effectively and purposefully and efficiently discharge the responsibilities entrusted to it. And this is the guiding spirit behind this new momentous measures that is now before this August House, that is the Right to Information Bill. Sir, the key to the successful functioning of any democratic policy is the ability of citizens to observe and evaluate the functioning of elected representatives and make an informed judgment of their performance. This evaluation is predicated on the easy availability of necessary information for a citizen to arrive at an assessment of what the government has done or what it is to. Further, sir, our founding fathers have established an elaborate system of rights and obligations, a system of checks and balances, a system with clear division of powers at different levels of government. This complex web further translated into practice by our laws, procedures, policies, and programs is the foundation of our rich, varied, vibrant polity, which has earned us the respect of the whole world for our ability to harmoniously match the goals of economic development and a pluralistic democratic society. Sir, at the center of this intricate web is the common man, the Am Admi, whose prosperity and welfare is the core concern of our Constitution. It is this common man, or common woman, who is the fulcrum of our democratic system as an observer, as the seeker of information, as the one who asks relevant questions, as the analyst, and as the final judge of our performance. The UPA government has made a commitment not only to work for the welfare of the common man, but also to strengthen his or her role as an arbiter of our destiny. 
It is in this background that our government has introduced the Right to Information Bill and the subsequent amendments to this August task. Mr. Speaker, sir, efficient and effective institutions are the key to rapid economic and social development. Institutions which can translate promises into policies and actionable programs with the least possible cost and with the maximum possible efficiency. Institutions which can deliver on the promises made and convert, as the Honorable Finance Minister pointed out a few days ago, while presenting the budget, converting outlays into outcomes. For institutions to be efficient and effective, they must function in a transparent, responsive, and accountable manner. This is dependent not only on processes internal to these institutions, but also on the ability of citizens and external agents to enforce their rights vis-a-vis -vis these very institutions. The Right to Information Bill, sir, will bring into force another right which will empower our citizens in this regard and ensure that our institutions and their functionaries discharge their duties in the desired manner. It will bring into effect a critical right for enforcing other rights and fill a vital gap in a citizen's framework of rights. Sir, while there is an existing Freedom of Information Act, the bill now under consideration is more far-reaching and effective. And I'm very grateful to the National Advisory Council, presided over by Srimati Sonia Gandhi, for having played a very important role in bringing into focus what, what, what are the major drawbacks in the previous legislation. It has, the bill that we have presented has the widest possible reach, covering central and state governments, panchayat raj institutions, local bodies, as well as recipients of government grants. Access to information under this bill is extensive with minimum exemptions, which too can be overridden on the basis of a public benefit test, namely when the benefit of information, release of information outweighs the harm caused by disclosure of this information. However, I think that we should also consider exempting such information, the disclosure of which may result in breach of privilege of parliament or a state legislature. Even security and intelligence agencies, which are otherwise exempt, are subject to disclosure in cases of allegations of corruption or violation of human rights. The bill, the bill lays down an architecture for accessing information which is simple, easy, time-bound, and inexpensive. It has stringent penalties for failing to provide information or affecting information flows in any <coughs> way. In fact, it imposes obligations on agencies to disclose information so motto, thus reducing the cost of access. Sir, an important feature of the bill is the independent appeal mechanism proposed through the appointment of central and state information commissioner. This independent appeal mechanism, coupled with extensive disclosure obligations and stringent penalties, gives teeth to the right, making the right a potent instrument for good government. Mr. Speaker, sir, many honorable members have, during the discussion on the bill, raised many concerns and questions. They will be answered by the Minister of State, Shri Pachori. I would only like to see that everyone, particularly our civil servants, should see the bill in a positive spirit, not as a draconian law for paralyzing government, 
but as an instrument for improving <coughs> government citizens' interface, resulting in a friendly, caring, and effective government functioning for the good of our people. Sir, it is with this in mind that we have removed the penalty of imprisonment through this amendment. However, erring officials would still be subject to departmental proceedings. I appeal to all civil servants to see this bill in the right spirit and hope they will only be spurred towards better <coughs> performance. After all, we, the elected representatives of people, bow to the wishes of people and have come to know how. So will it be with this honest, hardworking, and civil servants. Sir, I would like the state governments to take the initiative and establish state information commissions. The bulk of our citizens' interface is with agencies under state governments, <coughs> and hence the success of this bill depends on their determination and their commitment to implement and generate awareness in the country at large. Sir, so our work will not end with the passage of this bill. This is an innovative bill where there will be scope to review its functioning as we gain experience. Therefore, this is a piece of legislation whose working will be kept under constant reviews. We will need to have also a sustained, have a sustained effort to establish institutions and systems envisaged under the bill, to build the capacity of our civil servants to discharge their obligation and above, above all, inform our citizens about the new rights conferred on them. Mr. Speaker, sir, I believe that the passage of this bill will see the dawn of a new era in our processes of governance, an era of performance and efficiency, an era which will ensure that benefits of growth flow to all sections of our people, an era which will eliminate the scourge of corruption, an era which will bring the common man's concern to the heart of all processes of governance, an era which will truly fulfill the hopes of the founding fathers of our republic. I thank you, sir. Okay, dispense with the, the lunch.